Hello everyone. Here we talk about the binomial distribution. Let's have a look at binomial trial. Binomial trial is a special experiment and it's very common, uh, very useful. This experiment, there are only two possible outcomes, success or failure from this experiment. This experiment can be repeated many times. We say it is very common because any experiment may have many possible results or possible outcomes. But we can always organize all the possible outcomes into two groups. One group is what we are interested in, and another one is including something else. So what we focus, what we are interested, that's what we call the success. And another, the rest part being called the failure. So we can always organize all the possible outcomes into two parts, success or failure. Observation for this kind of experiment. We try to observe the number of times of success happened in many times repeating experiments. The repeated experiments are independent under the same circumstances or same situation. The probability that success happened in each experiment keeps same. These are our basic assumptions about this experiment. With all these features, this kind of experiment is called binomial trial or binomial experiment. The probability distribution for each experiment can be generally described as this. Since each experiment, we only observe two possible outcomes, success or failure. So that is yes or no situation. So success being marked as yes or one, and the failure is labeled as zero or no. If we also list corresponding probability for each experiment, lowercase p represents the probability success happen. Then 1 minus p we noted as q is the probability that a failure happen. If we use y as the random variable, for this random variable, two possible value only, 1 or 0. And for this random variable, probability p to be value one and the probability one minus p to take value zero. When this experiment is repeated n times and the same condition, we use random variable x to represent the number of success observed during this n times experiments. The possible values for x would be 0, 1, 2, until n. That means if we do n times this experiment, we may observe success one time, two times, three times, maximum n times. And we may not observe any time success happen. So that's why possible value from 0 until 1. And all the corresponding probabilities for each possible value would be expressed in the same formula. So probability x times success being observed would be combination n x multiply p x exponent and multiply 1 minus p with exponent n minus x. So this expression is called the binomial probability distribution. So they all here in this mathematical 
expression. It carried everything, all the information about this binomial trial. It can also be listed in the table. So this what is called the probability distribution table. So all the possible value for random variable x listed on the first row, and all the corresponding probability being written in the second row. So you can see they all have same format, and every part they just replaced the possible value x. And that value represents how many times success being observed during n times experiment. And at the bottom, we also give you the related information, the knowledge, and we can easily find out the average value for this random variable and the standard deviation for this random variable. So average value is n multiply p and the standard deviation is square root n p q. When you try to apply the knowledge of binomial distribution to a real problem, you need to recognize the binomial trial from the question background. The repeating experiment should be identified in the question, and the result of the experiment each time is a yes or no, which are called success or failure, and they should be recognized as well. After the experiment is identified, we also understand that success and failure are about in this question. Then the three key values should be figured out from the question. How many times the experiment was repeated? That's the n. So this is one of the key values should be recognized. What is the chance for success to appear in one-time experiments? That is the lowercase p. This number should be indicated in the question. And then you try to answer the question. You have to check out the other information. How many times success were observed in n times experiment? So that is another key value, x. After you have these three key values recognized, you can easily use the formula, use the table, or use the Excel worksheet to figure out the question answer. Here's the example. A telemarketer makes six phone calls per hour, and the records showed that 30% chance a sale could be made through these phone calls. For any two hours period, answer the following questions. What is the probability of making exactly four sales? What is the chance of making no sales? How much chance at the list one sale could be made? What is the probability of making exactly one sale? How many, how much chances? At least two sales could be made. How many sales could be made on average in any two-hour period? So, from this question, the telemarketer makes phone calls. So for every phone call, there are only two possible results. Either the sale was made or the sale wasn't done. So this yes or no situation, so it's a buy situation clearly here. And the phone call can be repeated, repeated, repeated. So that is a binomial trial. And in this question, how many times the experiment was repeated? That means the call is our experiment. In two hours, we have information per hour, make six phone calls, so 12 phone calls, so that would be our n. What is the chance success appear one-time experiment? And we clearly told 
30% chance the sale can be done. So, the P is 30%, 0.3. That is the probability for success happen in one time experiment. How many times the success were observed in n time experiments? Follow the question A, B, C, D, E, F. We will recognize the next part of information. Here we go, part A. What is the probability making exactly four sales? Okay, so we observe four times success. So x is a four. We put all the numbers in the formula. So here's 12, pick up a four combination, and 0 0.3 with four exponent, and 1 minus 0 0.3 with 2 minus 4 exponent, we turn out the answer 23.11%. And you do have the combination button on calculator. If you use calculator to get the answer, here is the operation you should do. You have combination NCR button, and you also have exponent button on the calculator, YX. So you put them all in exactly like the way it shows on the screen, you get the answer. Part B. What is the chance of making no sales? Clearly we observe no success, so x is a 0. We put all the information in the formula again, give us answer 1.38%. Part C. How much chance at least one sale could be made? We are asking at least one sale. Make sure you understand at least one sale. So 1 is included, probably 1, probably 2, 3, 4, 5, and 2, 12 sales. They all being included in this situation. So that's why at least one sale means we observe success is 1 or bigger. So it's greater or equal 1. We have choice here. We can add all the probability together. That means one time success, twice success, three times success, and two, twelve times success. This is a long operation. Or we can choose the short one because all the possible situations, the probability together is one. So if we only kick out P0, that means no success. So that's exactly the opposite event, no success. If we take out a no success, that means we observe at least one. That is the logic. So we already got probability for no success in part B. So we can simply use 1 minus 1.38% 1 to get the answer, 98.62% chance we would get at least one sale in two hour period. Part D. What is the probability making exactly one sale? This is a similar, so we have x equals 1, we put number in, we get the answer, 7.12%. Part E, how much chance at least two sales? Here we are going to apply the logic again. At least two sales means we observe success two or more. So x equals 2 or bigger than 2. This situation includes a lot of conditions, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, until 12, they are all here. So we have a long operation again. But we do have shortcut. 
If we kick out one, kick out zero, that would be what we're looking for. At least two cells. So no cell. That is the exceptional condition against this question. So we use one minus p zero minus p one will give us exactly at least two cells. And we have p zero p one already. So we just do the calculation, get answer ninety one point five percent. Part F would be easy. We're looking for how many cells on average for any two-hour period. So we do have this formula: n multiplied p give us the mean or average value. So twice multiply zero point three give us three point six cells on average for each two-hour period. We can also use a binomial distribution table. Sometimes the table being created, and for the case, that's how the table looks like. So on the top, clearly mark n. So this table only for twelve times experiment. That's our case. N equals twelve. And then the first column give you all the possible value of random variable x. How many times success would be observed? Zero, one, two, until twelve. That's all the possible value. And then in the first row, give us some options for success probability. So one time experiment, how much chance success may happen? So here we have some options: five percent, ten percent, twenty percent, thirty percent. So when we have a specific question, we probably only use one of them or two, not every one. So in our case, we have clear information: thirty percent chance for the success happen in one time experiment. Thirty percent chance to make a sale in one phone call. So here it is. We only use zero point three that column. So here, show you how it applied. For example, what is the probability making exactly four sales? Okay, we choose this column and we find the success of four zero point two three one. That is our answer for part A. How much chance make no sales? We pick up success number zero. So zero point zero one four will be the answer for part B. How much chance we have exactly one sale made? So the green circle circled one time success. That is the answer for part D. So from this table, if we're looking for at least one cell, the chance would be from one. You put all the number together, or you use one minus the first number. If we say maximum six sales made, so you would add from the first row until success number six, add them all together. So you can get all kinds of question answered. We can also use Excel function to make it happen. So in Excel we have binomial dot dist. That is the function give you probability for success. So here for part A. The first parameter you fill in, how many times success, and second one, how many times the experiment done. That's n, and then third one, how many times, uh, how much chance in one time experiment success happen. So that's p. So three key values in the first three kilometer. The last one, which is zero. 
a yes or no. The last parameter is yes or no for cumulative situation. When we answer specific time success being observed, this is non-cumulative. If we try to answer at most, and this is called cumulative. So that means you include all the previous number. That's cumulative. So for this parameter, you either use 0 or use 1. 0 means no, 1 means yes. For example, part B, part C, we're looking for at least one cell. So we can use 1 minus no cell. 1 minus the probability of no cell. If we ask the question, say, how much chance at most nine cells could be made in two hour period? So the answer would be nine. So the rest part is uh, 12 and the 0 0.3. And the last parameter would be one because cumulative. We said at most nine. That means zero one two three four five six seven eight are all included so we need to have all of them together one if we ask uh, how much chance less than nine cells so in that case nine is not included less than nine so your answer would be instead of nine for the first parameter and you change to eight this would give us less than 9 sales being made. This is the probability. So with this understanding, we can answer part E. So we calculate the probability at most 1. And then we use 1 minus this would give us at least 2 sales. At least 2 sales made. So that's the answer for part E. This is how you manage answering this kind of question in Excel. It is very convenient. You should practice and try it out. See you next time.